Okay, everybody, this is lesson 6.2 and 6.3 in your book, which covers how to solve equations with proportions. And I'm going to go ahead and start out with a definition, which, let me just minimize this. A proportion is an equation that states that two ratios are equal to each other, which basically just means that one ratio equals another ratio. And since we're in proportions and ratios, we're not going to call them fractions, but essentially that's what it is, equivalent fractions. And since you have one equation, one, one fraction equaling another fraction, we'll just call it a proportion. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into our first example. Are the following ratios a proportion? And one method, which is one of the easiest methods, is to merely just find the cross products. Multiply diagonally, 5 times 6, which comes out to 30, and 15 times 2, which is also 30. If you get the same cross products, then you can call them a proportion. If you don't get the same cross products, if you don't get the same number, if I didn't get 30 and 30, let's say I got 30 and 29, then you cannot technically call it a proportion, even if it's written that way. Here's our next example, example number two. We're going to use the same method, which is find cross products. 8 times 4 is 32. 5 times 6 is 1,000, I mean 30. And are the products the same or are they different? And according to my calculations, they are not the same. Therefore, we're not dealing with a proportion. Very, very simple way of comparing ratios and telling whether or not it's a proportion. Next, let's go ahead and get into solving proportions where you have a missing value. In this instance, we're missing the denominator underneath 21. And one way to do this is just to look at factors. You know, you can just, you know, sometimes it's, it's pretty obvious what it is. For instance, 7 times 3 equals 21. And that's easy to do in your head and just multiply the denominator, the 5, by the same factor of 3. 5 times 3 is 15. And there you go. You get 21 over 15. So the value for n was 15. So that's, a, that's an example of how you do it when it's, uh, you know, pretty obvious. And, you know, another thing that you can also do is, you know, when you're done, I know you don't like doing this, but it's a good habit to get into which is just to check your math, okay? 5 times 21 is 105. 15 times 7 is also 105. So you have the same cross products. And that just is just another check just to tell whether you're doing it right or not. And it definitely looks like we're doing it right. All right, let me erase this and go on to the next slide. Okay, now here's one where it's not going to be so obvious. We have 3 over p equals 4 to 5. And if you look at the, the top, the numerators, the top number there, uh, you know, getting from 3 to 4 is not um, a matter of just, you can't just say plus 1. Fractions don't work that way. We don't look at sums or differences. We look at factors. And factors either have to be multiplied or divided. And um, this one's not so obvious. 3 times 3 equals 9. 3 times 1 equals 3. So it's obviously going to be a decimal, or if you want to think of it as a mixed number, go ahead and think of it that way. But it's not going to be so obvious. So what we have to do is fall back on our algebra. And our algebra is, you know, the basic one-step equation type algebra, which you've learned earlier this year. So let's go ahead and cross-multiply. We're cross-multiplying the 3 and the 5 and the 4 and the p. So p times 4 equals 3 times 5. Now, you don't have to write it out that way, but I'm just showing you what's being multiplied. 
Another thing you have to do is remember to bring down that equal sign. Okay? Bring down that equal sign in between them because we're making an equation. If we don't make an equal sign there, then we're not dealing uh, with an equation. Okay? Our next step is just to clean it up a little bit. P times 4 just basically means 4P. And obviously 3 times 5 is 15. Next, solve the equation. Now this is a basic multiplication equation. And to solve a multiplication equation, we do the inverse operation. Now the inverse operation of multiplication is what? Yes, you said it. Division. Let's divide. What are we going to divide by? And yes, you are right. We are going to divide by 4. Very good. I'm glad you um, sitting at your desk right now said 4. Nice job. So let's divide by 4. There you go. Now 15 divided by 4 comes out to 3.75. 3 and 7,500. If you want to write it as a mixed number, go ahead. 3 and 3 fourths. That's also what you would get. So either one is fine. I don't care how you write your answer as a decimal or as a mixed number. Either one's great. Okay, here's our next example. Let's go ahead and go about this in the same manner. Cross multiply, set the equal sign in the middle, and then solve for the letter C. 9 times C is 9C. 12 times 4 is, yep, it's 48. Clean it up. 9C equals 48. And you're not done. Some some people, you know, a common mistake when, when people are solving these is they say, oh, the answer is 48. Now, that would be true if it was if it was just, you know, there was no 9 there. If it was just C, yeah, then we can get away with saying that C equals 48. But that's, that's not really what's going on here. We have 9 times the number equals 48. Now, I know 9 times 5 is 45. So I'm betting C is going to be close to 5. And that's probably a good bet to take. So let's divide both sides by 9. The inverse operation is division, so we're going to divide by 9. And 48 divided by 9 comes out to 5 and 1 third. Now, if you did that on your calculator, 48 divided by, uh, by 9, you might get, um, you know, 5, well, you will get 5.3333333. But uh, it's, it's best if you just do the math, the long division, and avoid writing out a, a repeating decimal that just goes on and on and on and on. It's, it's a, uh, just a prettier answer if you put five and one third down. I, I think most math teachers, mathematicians would like that. You should do the same as well. Next example here is uh, 20 to 5 equals 8 to h. Cross multiply, skipping kind of a little bit here, and you get 20h. 20 times h is 20h. 5 times 8 is 40. Solve it by using the inverse operation, which is divide by 20. 40 divided by 20 is 2. That's very easy. So easy a caveman could do it. So h equals 2. One more example like these. All right, 4 times y, and you're going to do 7 times 8. What's 4 times y? Yep, that's 4y. What's 7 times 8? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It is 56. Nice job. Okay, so we get 4y equals 56. And this is a very simple equation. Just divide by 4. 56 divided by 4 is, I think, 14. All right, there we go. So y equals 14. All right, I'm going to move on to a story problem, a word problem. And in this instance, in this example, we have the classic car and, you know, distance and gasoline problem where you have a car traveling 182 miles on six and a half gallons of gas. And the question is, how far could it travel on eight gallons of gas? So when you set up the proportion, you want everything to match up. Okay, now here's, here's how I set up the proportion. Okay, now I have... 182. 182, that is a mile number. That, that number stands for miles. Okay? And 6.5, that is a quantity number. That's gallons. 
And when you set up your other part of the proportion, you know, the other ratio right over here, we better make sure that it matches up with the, the side that we've already made. So M, this M right here, that stands for miles. We don't know how many miles because that's the question. How far could it travel? We, we don't know the number of miles. So that's a miles number. That's why I use the letter M. And I, I tend to do that whenever I set up proportions. I tend to use a letter that has to do with what I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for you know, inches, I might use the letter I. If I'm looking for feet, I might use the letter F. Or um, if I'm looking for a number of people, I might use the letter P. You don't have to use different letters for different things, but um, that's, it's kind of a good way to do it, because that way you can kind of keep track of, of what the, what the uh, letters stand for and what you're actually looking for. So this is for miles, and the 8, that is for 8 gallons. Okay, so if you if you look closely, you'll see that it's everything corresponds. 182 miles, m miles, 6.5 gallons, 8 gallons. Everything matches up. 6.5 corresponds with 8. 182 matches up with m. Everything works out really nicely. Then what you do is solve it. Okay, and this is just what I was talking about, so I'm gonna skip through that. You solve it, okay? Let's do the cross multiplication, set up your algebra, your equation. You're going to solve it with division like we've done with the other examples. And when we do 1,456 divided by 6.5, we get 224. So there's your answer, 224 miles. Okay, that does the lesson. Uh, please complete your flip uh, notes sheet and bring that into class tomorrow filled out and we'll do our practice problems and our practice exercises in class see you ever see you tomorrow everybody good night